Good morning and welcome back to Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. Today we're going to be working on a memorial program. I recorded this tutorial months ago and at the time decided not to upload it, um, but I've seen a lot of requests for um, information on how to make memorial programs. So that's what we're going to be working on today. I I was all set to upload the tutorial and then realized somehow that there was no sound. So I'm going to be redoing this video with a little different background, but I will use the same techniques so that you can make a program that looks like this. All right, let's get started. First of all, I'm going to bring up a blank sheet of paper. And whenever I make programs or booklets or anything um, that's going to be based on folding a paper in half, um, I always use guidelines. So first we're going to put a guideline straight down the middle of the page. Make sure you haven't moved uh, the page at all, otherwise your line will not be directly down the middle. So um, as soon as you open up the page, instantly go ahead and go to Size and Position, Alignment Guides, and choose the Vertical Guide, and it puts your line straight down the middle of your page. So now we're going to bring up the new image that I found. It was the closest I could find to the one, the original one I used, but it will still serve its purpose to show you how to uh, design your own. And all I did was I searched in Google for high-res serene images and I looked through them all and find one that looked uh, that I thought looked really nice and I think this one will work out so I'm going to go now to cut out in picture add a colored shape and I'm gonna just make this a white shape and I'll be showing you a new feature to use today. This is going to be the back of the memorial program. And I'm just basically trying to put this square right in the middle of this half, judging from this line over to the left side and trying to make it look as if it's the same all the way around. Uh, t the same distance from the edge all the way around. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to click on this insert and I'm going to go to edge effects and this time we often use soft edge. This time we're going to use cool edge and it's the first one at the bottom of the this menu. Once you click on edge effects on your screen you'll see that menu. So I'm going to choose Cool Edge, then I'm going to click on Designer, and I'm going to scroll down until I find the edge I want to use. And you see, you can click on the different ones and see how they'll look, so you'll know which ones you want to use. They have uh, not a whole bunch, but a nice amount. And so you're going to click through there until you find the edge you want to use, and I like the edge I like the plane or this edge which is called what is that called double double bevel and as you can see it shrunk down my square my rectangle so whenever you use this on a picture um, always click stretch edge to fit picture and then it will make it the full size of the rectangle that I had originally put there also, you can use these around a person's picture to uh, make an edge and so it won't cut off any of the portion of the picture you want to keep. Always click that box that says um, fit it to the size of the picture. So now I have this beveled edge and I'm going to zoom it out a little more, give myself more space in this panel so for the information that I'm going to, going to be adding here. 
Also, I like to add a shadow to this. It gives it a little more depth. So I'm going to click on the image. I'm going to go to Special Effects, Shadow. And I'm going to click Soft. And you see it just darkened it a little and, and defined it a little more. So now I want to include the information that's usually on the back of the program. It's usually um, the pallbearers with the pallbearer's name, the name of the mortuary, the name of where the person will be interred um, or buried, and also a thank you message from the family. So I'll show you how to make your text boxes. Click on text, add text. I'm just dragging it over. I'm going to shrink it down some. And then I'm going to change this to a fancier font. I think I'll go with uh, Edwardian. This is Edwardian script. And I'm going to title this as Paul Bearers. Not that big. All right. So now I usually put the heading in a fancy text, and then I put the names of the pallbearers. Some people just put um, pallbearers and and uh, to be announced or things like that. But if you have all of their names, I always put the names of the pallbearers and there might be also honorary pallbearers so um, you would have a separate list for honorary pallbearers but I'm just going to put the pallbearer one here now and then I'm going to change the font for this text box to just plain Arial shrink it down and there are usually six pallbearer actual pallbearers so I'm just going to type name six times and show you how I normally set it up. I normally have two people per line. And I line up their first names in the column. If, if someone has an extremely long name, then you just have to alter for that if it's too long sometimes um, you might not be able to line them up exactly but if you just at least center it by going here then at least all the names will be centered because um, I like symmetry so um, I think it looks best that way all right so now I'm just gonna duplicate this and make it three times two more times And then I'm going to line all of those up. <laughs> there we go. I still had it on center. So, and next I just copy both of these by going out to the side. Copy them, copy in the name by clicking here on the double sheets next to the scissor. And then if you needed to add, um, honorary pallbearers then all you have to do is change the and type honorary in front of the pallbearers but I'm going to use this one to say the mortuary and the burial site and then also um, to add the thank you or the response from the family so I'm just going to right click on pallbearer hit edit text and type entrusted to uh, usually it says arrangements entrusted to I've done more of these than I wanted ever to do so then we'll change this to I'll just make up a place Just say 
Mason Mortuary. And you would usually have the address underneath there. And this would all be centered. Then I'm going to make another copy of that. And this will be where the burial site is. So I'll right click, edit text, and I'll put um, burial. And then here you would put the name of the cemetery or the mausoleum. So I'll say Mount Hope Cemetery. And incidentally, there is no A in cemetery. Um, I've seen it misspelled uh, before. And then the last um, or the lower portion, I'm going to do another paste. And this will be a message from the family thanking everyone or whatever they choose to, to do. Some like a poem on the back instead of all of this. So it would basically be up to your customer, but this is like the typical um, memorial program. This area can be all fancy text if you like, or you can start it with the name of the family, and then you can use this to type wishes to thank everyone for their kindness and all that. So the, I'll type the typical message that I normally do. This time I'm going to leave off the aerial text and just use the fancy text. These can move a little closer together and if you wanted to add in um, a picture you could do that in the open space. You could add, a, I usually put a Bible or some small clip art here but if if you don't want to you can just leave it just like that. And now we'll start on the front. First of all, I'm going to bring up a circle by going to cut out and picture, add a colored shape, change it to a circle. I'm going to change it to white. Now I'm going to resize the circle to make it into an oval. I'm just going to bring this picture up from the bottom because I didn't save it. And for this particular picture, when I found it, it had a, a green background. He was standing in front of a, a shrub or something. And I just took the picture to um, background.bg, and it instantly cut that background out for me. Um, if you have a picture that it's harder to cut uh, on using cut out using background BG, you can also cut them out easily in Microsoft Picture It. And if you look at the tutorials on wedding mockups, I've shown in there how to uh, crop around people. And actually, it's a, I have it in a few tutorials. So if you if you're watching the tutorials, you'll see it in there um, on how to crop out pictures. I, I mention it quite a bit in videos. I'm going to put a frame around the picture and it looks good as an oval. I've done some um, in a square format or a rectangular format. It's just your preference or your customer's preference. So I'm going to go here to cut out a picture, add a colored shape. I'm going to change it to a circle, hit done, and I'm going to make that look kind of like a metallic frame and so I'm going to go to paint and color effects fill with the gradient I can either choose silver if I um, if you like but I think I'm gonna go with the gold one I don't know I just like gold who doesn't and then I'm gonna scroll down and click on my sunburst pattern here which looks like the rays are going out and then I'm going to hit done. 
and I'm going to slide it down one layer so that it's under the picture. And if you have difficulty um, sizing, because we're going to try to mimic the same shape that uh, his picture's in, if you have difficulty doing that, instead of making a whole new shape like I just added the new shape, you could just duplicate his picture and then you could change one of them because it will already be the right shape. You can change one of them to this gradient background. So you could do it that way, but I'm just going to go ahead and size it on my own. And for this one, I had more at the bottom and less at the top. I kind of like that offset look sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do that. And all you do is drag it down, drag it, drag down a portion of the bottom longer than the top. And it gives you that offset effect. I'll switch back so you can see what I'm talking about. Just this. If you don't like that, you can just leave it, put him right in the middle of it, and that'll look okay as well. And just for now, because I want, I'm going to cut this section out, and then I'm going to switch to the opposite area so to keep everything else. But I don't want this picture showing down here. So just for the moment, I'm going to put it all the way. I'm just grouping these so I don't have to drag so far. So now I'm going to take this picture and drag it all the way down to the bottom. And I want to cut out this white part. But before I cut out this white part, I want to put a shadow around this whole oval. So I'm going to group these together by clicking on the white area, holding the control key. And now I'm going to click on the gold area and I'm going to put those together. Now I'm going to go to special effects shadow and I'm going to put probably a couple of shadows around this just to make it stand out. Give it a, a three dimensional look like it's raised on the cover. So I'm going to do that once. Then I'm going to go in, add a colored shape and you, you've seen this in quite a few to this little uh, thing that I happened up on how to make the shadows darker. I put that, I drug that down a layer and it's still chosen and I'm going to control, hit control and then click on that oval again and I'm going to group those and this time when I hit shadow it will make it darker. And this one I'm going to enlarge it a bit more and so now that looks good it looks like it's kind of standing up off of the page like it's kind of raised and now we can cut out this center portion of the white so I'm going to go to cut out and picture cut out of picture by color selection and I'm just going to click in the middle of that white now I'm going to hit next select opposite area and done and now I can delete that oval and I can delete the original background and now I have this space open and I want the inside of this to have a shadow so I'm gonna go to cut out of, I'm sorry I'm gonna go to special effects shadow and you'll get a message saying that there can't be a shadow because it's too large just click OK click on soft shadow anyway and you see when you do that it puts a shadow on the inside of the box I'll show you that again even though it says it's it was too large to put a shadow this is how I put shadows in my cutouts so I'm gonna click done and now I'm gonna click on his picture and I'm just gonna drag him back up into this area and size in there. So now we're, we're practically done. Um, now we're going to do the portion where you put, well we could start with his name above. So what I'm do for that is I'm going to add another shape. 
I'm going to go to cut out and picture, add a colored shape. I'm going to make it white and I'm going to make it square. Hit done. I'm going to resize it into a rectangle above his picture. And this is where you're going to put the title of who the service is going to be for. So I could have dropped him down more. And maybe, let me see, how much did I have? I don't have a lot of excess at the top. But I'll show you in the previous one, I dropped him down more. So I, and I put his name up here much larger. It's just by preference if you want it um, larger or smaller. You just have to make sure you leave room for the information that goes on the bottom. So I'm just going to put in loving memory. And usually you would do the in loving memory. You could do that in the fancy text or the plain text. But one or the other I would put in the opposite text. So for this one I'll put in loving memory in the plain text. In loving memory. I'm going to shrink that down. Put it near the top. And then I'm going to duplicate that to make the of. And drag that up. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can grab it without moving my line. loving memory and you can make this smaller move it up a little bit and then I'll give him the name and this one I'm going to change to Edwardian so it'll be in the fancier font I'm going to take out the italicies because it's already italicized, italicized. And I forgot the name I gave him, so I'll just give him a new name. Okay. And then we're just going to put this shrink it down a little bit and put it right under the of okay and now just to give this a nicer look I make the white box a bit transparent as you've seen me do in the um, wedding magazine program for weddings so I'm just going to click on that white box go to first I'm going to go to edge effects and soften the edge click soften the edge and then you just click up and down on the slider and you'll see it'll start to soften the edges and then I'm going to go to special effects the third choice at the top is make transparent and I'm just going to slide this over until I can start seeing the sky beneath or whatever portion of the image where, when you can see it beneath the white square I think it just gives it a a nicer look and then at the bottom we will put the burial, not the burial, the um, sunrise, sunset, the dates, and then the date of the service, the, the, the location of the service, and the address of the service. So all of that will go on this page. So that's how you make the cover of the funeral program. Now for the inside, I'll stick with this one now. I'm going to make a blank page. Once again, before you start moving things around, 
go to size and position alignment guide you're going to choose a vertical one and since I already have text boxes down here you can just drag them from the tray into here one will be the side that talks about or has the obituary or the story of the person's life so I'm just going to drag up the fancy writing because this is going to be a heading again and I usually put the wonderful life of or you can put obituary for this one I'm going to put the wonderful life of shrink it down a little bit sometimes you'll have to get it you want to make sure that it's readable that it's easily readable um, so you don't want to shrink it down too much but the rest of the text whenever you're using writing the obituary sometimes they can get pretty long so those I would always do in just a plain text so I'm just gonna drag up the a plain text box because you might have to shrink it down really small to fit it in on a program that is just a one sheet program so you want to use the clearest writing as possible so here you would um, I need to make one more text box for the uh, uh, two more text boxes of the fancy so I'm just gonna hit it and do a couple of them the one in the middle will say of and then his name will be in the bottom one This one will be of. Seems like I'm kind of struggling with this tutorial, but this is not a topic that I really want to want to be uh, working on right now. It's enough going on, but I guess it's needed alright and then the rest of the text box and what I what I like to do just to make the inside sometimes more decorative add a black text box or if you want to correspond the colors with the cover you could do that as well and I'm just going to make like an outline for the for the inside of the program and you could take this all the way across if you wanted to I'll show you how that looks and just have one big box go to cut out a picture add cut out picture make another one and this one's going to be white and this is just going to to make up an edge and you can make it as thin as you'd like sometimes the thinner the better and it just dresses it up a little bit and then I'm going to drag it underneath the lettering and I'll re, re uh, position the lettering so that it's inside or you can do one for each side and remember you're always spacing it from this center line and I'll just group those two together by clicking here click on the, the white layer hold control and then click the bottom layer group it copy and paste and just line it up exactly like the one next to it all right so that looks pretty good and then this would be the body of the obituary 
the story of the person's life. I'll put that in parentheses. All right. And I would start this portion maybe about right there. And if you want to put like a little accent here, you can. I usually put like a little wavy accent or if it's a lady, a rose or, you know, you can just uh, put in what you think might look best. And then on this side is the funeral actual program. So once again, I'm going to use a fancy heading and try to line these up the same. I'm going to right click, edit text, and this is going to be oops, order of service. Get done. And do the same thing. Grab grab the plain writing, copy it, paste it, and on this side, I normally, this side you can normally make the writing larger so that it's easier to read, not so big that it's too big for your heading, and I'm going to right click, and the order of program usually on this side, I'm just going to go ahead and finish typing this in and then you'll see the the final setup so that you will know how to set up the entire funeral program it's because sometimes the family is upset and they can't really think of you know the order of service so you can already have this prepared and they can agree or add in if they want special remarks and all that um, they can add that in but you could give them a basic basic setup for them to go by because you know, it's usually a pretty tough time. So as much help as you can offer the family, I'm sure they will appreciate. All right. So I'm just going to finish this, and then I will um, add a picture of it all done so that if you want to use this format, you can.